Did she take convenience in summer? Yeah, I uh, know, no. So she didn't get caught up no. in this. Oh, okay. yeah, I know, I know, that's a mess. It started, just, just so you know, it started. Thanks. Yeah. I mean, we can not talk about anything, but DMAC is, <laughs> is a wonderful institution. <laughs> Okay, it's six o'clock. We'll call the meeting to order. Are there any additions or corrections to the agenda for tonight's meeting? Do we have a motion to approve the agenda? We have a second. All in favor, aye. Opposed, same sign. Agenda's approved. We'll move into the consent items. Anybody have any questions or comments on any of those? Sorry. Any other questions on the consent items? Hearing none, do I have a motion to approve the consent items? Do we have a motion? Do we have a second? All in favor, aye. aye. Opposed, same sign. Consent items are approved. Don't look like we have any correspondence this evening. The Baxter Early Learning Center report. And John and I talked, um, and we need somebody to make a motion that we just remove that from our agenda. Yeah, just um, since it won't be, we're not affiliated with them anymore, and it's not even the Baxter Early Learning Center anymore. We just need to remove that. But we think we need you to do somebody to do a motion. I'll, I'll move on that. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor, aye. Second. Oh, same sign. Motion's approved to uh, remove the Baxter Early Learning Center report from the future agendas of this meeting. Uh, public forum. Looks like we have one person in person tonight. So we'll go with them and then. A, if there's anybody on Zoom after that, um, they can speak. And then I think we're going to discuss later, but this will probably be the last meeting where we take, we'll, we'll do a Zoom meeting so people can watch it. But if they need to speak to us, we're going to ask that they come in in person in future meetings. So, so Sue, you have the floor. I got your email, I got that information, so. I, I need to clarify my only reason for using Tom Dieter's name and it's just because that's where he works and he did look over the charts and the data that that was my only reason I'm not saying he's you know supporting anything political I, I, I wouldn't ever do that for Tom you know because he's such a great mathematician and statistician he's so good to uh He's the one that helped make some, some suggestions for making the chart more visually understanding. So anyway, that clarification. The 2021 information for Nate won't be on the website till the end of the year. That's traditional for them, which is why the information only goes up through 2019. So I was only using that to make the point, as I had before, kind of a reminder that 
Iowa just looks at how the average state score compares to the national average. And if you're not looking at its ranks, and I occasionally brought in when I used to give handouts, page shots of the whole, uh, the ranking thing to show that Iowa's rank varies, but you're sitting roughly in the middle of the country for several of these. It will vary a little up and down depending on which grade level and which subject you're looking at. But I think we're capable of doing better and helping students and the citizens that they become to have improved skills both for their personal lives and for their careers, whatever work that they end up doing. And it would actually end up benefiting them in a number of ways, including the state economically with tax income and their income and contributions that they could make. So I just start looking at what are we gonna have to do to make up for 2021? <laughs> I just, because everything is suddenly going to change. So it's just the review of things that I've talked about before. I know that's coming up. And from what I've been able to see, some of the teachers have made great strides in changing their teaching styles and the effects of becoming more effective. And um, I'm hoping Baxter is one of the schools that can continue to see that improvement because, as you well know, the education sector is as fractured politically as the entire country. And we've still got segments that are still using methods that they shouldn't be doing. So thank you, Baxter, for trying to get there. And I hope you can get all the teachers up to speed on when they need to be. But just keep in mind the standards need to keep up in here too and looking for support system for the students and everything I've been talking about in between here. Somehow we need better support systems for some of them. And this seemed like an opportune time to mention it since we've got so much politically going on with the looking for additional support systems that could really help them do better and make them feel better about themselves. You were talking about bullying a little earlier and this is another area where that can come into play to help them feel better about themselves. Thank you. It's good to be back after a hearing discussion. <laughs> and the reason I wasn't tuning, I tried it one time and the sound was not, so I decided to log in again and the phone started ringing. So <laughs> rather than interruptions, I, I just skipped trying to do it by Zoom. And I'll just wait till I can come back and then listen because I really enjoyed the discussion. Thank you, Sue. All right. We have two other people. I think, I don't know if Aaron or Jamie, if you are interested, like, Raise your hand or something. Otherwise, I'm going to just assume you're just watching. You're just watching. Okay. I'm actually going to set the camera back by Sue. You don't have to do anything, I promise. <laughs> but that way they can see the room better. I'm sure they appreciate that. Yeah, I'm sure they get tired of looking at my face. That's you. But they got to see you a minute ago. Okay, we'll move on in the agenda into our business items. And the first item there is a building project update. Yeah, so we had our punch list um, meeting with Jamie and Dale and Jason Cooper and Pam. And there's very few issues. They were walking, they did a walkthrough and they're finishing up things. Um, we're still working on getting the new stools replaced in the science room. They're supposed to be delivered I think July 7th. Night, sometime in July that will fit under the tables and um, I just want to like publicly thank workspace because they are just covering that they're just giving us the new ones and then the old ones are just ours to keep so I mean yeah actually Pam's already taken a couple of them out to the new press boxes and um, using them for seating out there so I mean they they have just been wonderful through this I mean, really, they all have. I've, we've had just such good luck with everybody. And the floor people are working on replacing the floors in the commons, and um, they've been great. Uh, so they're just kind of wrapping things up, but um, we won't pay our final checks to people until everything's taken care of. But it was nice to see Jamie and Dale and Jason and everybody, the old gang, back together again for a little bit. Um, but yeah, things are going well, and um, we have people out working at the complex, the track, I don't know if you guys can pass there. It's done, it's not painted yet, but it's laid. 
And there was some question I saw on their Facebook or something. People asked about putting in a purple track. And that would have been super cool. And we did actually look into it. And the cost was double. And they also said that you don't want one because it starts out really cool purple and very quickly it fades and it's kind of a grayish color then. And they're like, you would not be happy with it very quickly afterwards. So that's why we went with just the regular black track. Um, but the press boxes look great and the mm -hmm. uh, bleachers on kids, not the complex, mm -hmm. but appreciate everybody's work. Um, Jeff Shepard's done an excellent job. Our field maintenance team, Ed um, Schmidt and Don Akins. I mean, and really a big thanks to Jason, or well, Jason, but Josh, not Josh. <laughs> but, well, Josh too, I mean, <laughs> that didn't come out right. But to Zach and Rob, because they have really spearheaded a lot of this, and Pam. I mean, people have been just pulling their hair out trying to get things ready for baseball and softball to start. And they've all done just a great job. It, it looked fantastic. So as much as that storm was horrible, it was almost a blessing because we have all that great stuff over right now. So. Any word on the restroom situation? Have you heard anymore? Yes. So um, Tracy or Jeff said that um, everything's just on back order. So they wanted to get the um, faucets that shut off, the automatic shut off. And there was like a huge delay on those. So they said, you know, they want to get the work done, but it, it probably will not even happen this summer. It'll, or it won't be done in time for sure. the season, but um, they'll have it for next summer and for not to like crack and stuff, it'll be done. But it was just the, with everything else going on in the world, there's just such a, a backup. They sure. couldn't get the supplies. Yeah, I was just wondering, I worked out there last week and a lot of people were asking, um, is underneath the um, football stadium, are those bathrooms open for use? I believe so. I believe they do open them. So okay. if people really didn't want to use the portable okay. bathrooms, yeah. they could go over there. Okay, thanks. And then um, also the multi-purpose building, uh, that is supposed to be getting started in August, late August, early September. We're on the list, but we're just in line to get that going. I think after the last meeting, I drove around and the bolt was lit. So. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I saw it too. I, mean, I was really excited. Finally, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> highly anticipated <laughs> bolt. Yeah, and thanks to Van Lonen for that. I mean, and again, like the just everything, the pandemic and Drecho like screwed up everything. So they were waiting on parts, and you know, just I mean, we really did have a great team that helped us through this whole thing. So I just saw pictures of. Some districts around who are just getting started and I'm super excited for them but I'm like holy the smokes cost, I can't imagine yeah cost, and just yeah. everything they're gonna have to go through in the next year and a half two years to get all this done we I'm glad we're on the tail end it when we did it oh goodness yeah. yeah 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 so that was we were very fortunate oh yeah it's kind of just a rough update and as far as the actual this current building um Pam and her team are doing a nice job there just waxing and clean just you know normal summer and we were going to have it open for fun days, right? Yeah. Early, so. Um, yep. Yeah, so I think the library is opening from one to three on Sunday. So we were just going to have the building open. Like that was the goal when we told the floor people that they um, we were replacing the floor. We had to have it done by Sundays because we thought people might want to walk through. And I'll talk a little more about like our back to school night um, in my superintendent report, but we're hoping to like have a big community um, kind of outreach that night. So I know the alumni banquet appreciated touring the school after. I don't know if you knew that they did that. Yeah, well, I knew they were going to, and they really liked that. So okay. that was nice. I think we're going to bring the bricks in. When, uh -huh. Oh, yeah. Because that time when Marie's going to have, the, I think she's got like Baxter memorabilia and stuff mm -hmm. on display in there. So I figured we could just set a little stand out or whatever by the door here with bricks. And if people want to purchase them. And what did we decide what we were using that for? I don't, we talked about it like towards the rec complex or something out there i think but i don't know if we really yeah, officially, I don't think we ever officially decided and i don't know if we officially decided that. for some reason twenty dollars a brick that's stuck in my mind but i don't know I if that's right or not, so. 
sudden the dog did so good for the second one. Celebrate. Perfect. Did you get that note? Corey's giving Amanda a great table. <laughs> yeah, Saturday, yeah. Yeah, just for a couple hours. Yeah. I've got my palette, so I'll just put that in there on the palette. Okay. Anybody else have anything on the building? Questions? Okay. Next item is to approve the depository bank for the 2021-2022 school year. We've used State Savings Bank in the past. They've been very supportive of us, so I guess I don't see reason to change their our local business. So. <laughs> Anybody have any comments on that? Somebody like to make a motion to approve the State Savings Bank as a repository for the upcoming year? Okay. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Both same side. Motion's approved to uh, approve State Savings Bank as a repository bank for the upcoming year. Next item is to approve Level 1 and Level 2 Investigator for Student Abuse. John and I talked about that a little bit, and, and Julie and I were looking into it. And before we had um, Chief Hicks like specifically listed, and we decided to um, just change it. Did you ever hear back, Julie? Um, they suggested that we go with our Baxter. So we just decided to change it to just kind of in general the Baxter Police Chief or his or her designee. Um, so that way we don't have to always change it. Um, and then Sarah is also our, she's our level one. Do we have any questions or comments on that? Somebody want to make a motion to approve the level one and level two investigators as presented? So moved. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor, aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion's approved to approve the level one and level two investigators. Next item on the agenda is COVID updates. Um, so I just want to let you know that there's um, in the next month or two, there'll be another kind of updated opening school again plan for this fall. There's details coming out and there was just a, a webinar on um, Monday about it. And it, there's it, the template isn't out yet, but it's pretty minimal. And the state of Iowa is really already doing most of the things that the federal government is having other states do like they have to have a plan for returning to in-person learning well i was been doing that already so we just have to talk a little bit about what we're going to spend our sr3 funds on and there has to be um, public input so i i believe there, there's more details to come but i believe we'll be able to present that at the july or the august board meeting and that would um, constitute public input so if people wanted to comment on our plan or how we're going to spend our funds or whatever mm -hmm. um, they can do it there but I just don't have a lot of details yet. So stay tuned. <laughs> um, and then we'll talk about our meeting formats for going forward after the COVID-19. So we're going to uh, have in-person board meetings uh, back to that. As we talked about earlier, uh, if the public wants to come in, we welcome Welcome to come in. We'll still have a uh, Zoom meeting, but it'll just be for people to watch. It won't be for them to participate. So if the public wants to participate in the meeting, they'll need to come in in person. Send that out, I assume, or communicate that. Yeah, I sure can um, let people know. And then if more people then do, or if we get a bigger crowd, we'll just move it from here to the library or the comments or whatever. Um, if the public wants to come, they sure can, but um, this room's a little small. Kind of little tight in there, so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, last month before school let out, when we um, went to um, the no mask mandate after um, the recommendation from the state, I just wanted to um, 
thank the teachers for um, it happened so quickly that you know a lot of kids and parents didn't even know that the you know mass mandate went away and and how there was not going to be any judging or bullying from was going to be tolerated from anybody regarding kids that were wearing masks and I just and every teacher had mentioned that in their class and so I just want to thank the teachers for that because it, you know the kids really do listen to them it's important to hear yeah thank you Any other COVID related items? Not for the moment. Good. I think things are pretty quiet <laughs> well, right now. So maybe yeah. it'll be someday we can take that up. Yeah. Or... <laughs> the Kidville and COVID, right? <laughs> Next item on the agenda is open enrollment. We have an application for open enrollment out. And so for um, Jamie and Rick Ross on behalf of their children, Carly and Austin, to continue at West Marshall. Uh, they just moved into the district and they want to continue at their school, so. Okay. Do we have a motion to approve the open enrollment out application for Jamie and Rick Fonts for their two children? Do we have a motion, do we have a second? Second. All in favor, aye. aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion's approved. down to our facilities, grounds, and transportation. Looks like we need to open a bid for a 1997 blue van. Yep, we have three. Three, three sealed bids. I have one for $300. I've never seen you do this. Oh, we have never gotten more than one. Oh, I haven't seen you. Oh, you just one. Is that a 15? It's not a 15 right? No, no, it's not. It's the old blue one, right? Yeah. So the new one is 12. And it has to be. There's crazy stipulations on the 12 passenger vans. You can't buy them brand new, um, so you can only buy them used. Well, this school up in Northern Iowa bought two of them brand new and then learned that they couldn't use them for students. So then they put them up for sealed bid. Well, they probably got nothing. Oh, right. That's terrible. No. Uh, they probably they, made money on the deal. There's schools reaching out everywhere because you can't find no. any brand new vans or used vans for schools. They're all brand new. So I actually reached out to um, Max Christensen at the DOT, or I mean at the DE, he's on the transportation, and said, so could we buy those because it would be considered used and he says yep their their loss is your gain so it only had a thousand miles on them wow. so we bid and we thought we were doing great we were proud of our bid we were like seven thousand dollars under and we were right at msrp um it, we took into con in consideration you know the amount that you lose when you drive it off the lot and things like that you know but i mean they, i think they actually received more than what you could buy a new one for yeah but there were uh, we were actually like fourth or fifth in the list of, of who got it we weren't even close so and they also said like don't get fancy because we were like well what if we worked out a deal with colfax or some district and we bought one and they bought one and then we bought theirs and they're like mm, don't even try this because they buy it bad yeah. or you know like, oh, no. yeah. so yeah yeah. Well, yeah. If you can find them, if you can yeah. find them, and you can't find them. Okay, we have a second bid for four hundred dollars. Three hundred and four hundred. Do you have to read this and like open these? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we have a third bid for one thousand five hundred and fifty dollars. Sure, you yes. okay. I'd like to. I'd so, like to say, so the highest bid is $1,550. We have a motion to approve that highest bid. So moved. We have a second. Second. Third. So then do you call them? Or? All in favor, aye. Yeah. 
both same size. Congratulations, you have the crowning order of a 98. Motion to approve. I'll call this thing off. To accept the bid of $1,550. Yeah, that's the high bid on the 97 blue band. Okay, the next item is stage rigging repairs. Yeah, so we got a bid or two bids for repairing the stage and it's pretty pricey. Um, the first bid was $9,533 and the second bid was $8,560. And um, my recommendation after visiting with John and Pam is that we just table this for now. It's not something that is critical that needs to be done. It's a, it would be nice to do sometime to do the updates on that stage, but um, it's a network. Right now, up in the trusses, there's like two by fours that go across oh, yeah. that have ropes that, that yeah. hold the pipes that the curtains hang curtains. from. And then there are some chains there, too. And I guess whoever looked at it and thought that those didn't look real substantial. I don't know. It's probably been that way for 30 years or more, and it's not like the stuff's weathering or that i mean it could be nicer and, and i think one of those bits they talked about using like unistrut steel and going between the bottom of the trusses and but i mean to me i look at it and it's like probably a thousand dollars of materials and it should take one person like probably two days to do it so i, I mean if we had somebody to that's capable we have to like start to no. 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 Just, How did they even come they're up? worried if somebody um, pulled on the curtain <laughs> real hard or tried to climb Sorry. or something that would, <laughs> would come down. An employee um, <laughs> bring so. a concern to us oh, okay. that they didn't think it was it was like it didn't look safe. So we said we'd look into it and we we did. So we looked into it and um we just feel like it's so expensive and it we have so many other projects going on right now that I mean it can be on the list but I don't know that it's like critical to spend this money on that project right now would this be something that would be kind of in our um like in our spring workshop when we were looking at projects yeah. and that kind of stuff with the grounds and just almost like the paint schedule and the track we set money aside yeah. for sure um, okay. and it, it may get moved to the bottom of the list as we see what a those right. other projects yeah, are. It's always, just, you know, you always look at those summer projects and decides which ones are more imminent than, than the others. So, yeah. Um, okay, so uh, does somebody want to make a motion to uh, table the stage repairs? Um, Currently, I mean, it'll stay on the kind of a longer term list of things to address, but since we do have two bids here right now, we probably need to formally table that if that's what the consensus is. So moved. We have a motion to table the stage rigging repairs for now. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor, aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion's approved to table that item. Okay, the next item is remodel of elementary office area and two classrooms. Um, so I forwarded you guys that message today with the bid um, from Joy Construction. And um, it was quite a bit higher than what I was expecting. Um, so what I did is I, I sent um, kind of a sketch to another contractor just, just today and said, hey, can we get another bid? And John and I were just talking about Maybe trying to reach out to some local contractors to see if um, I mean maybe their bid is right on. I don't know. Um, well, we would have to get two bids. Yeah. Anyway, so, so we just we want to see if if we can find a more economical way to do this project. So we are not ready to move forward on that project either. Can you remind me what this is? So it's using Jason's office. Um, so Jason's office and Janet's office uh -huh. right now, what they're gonna do is take the wall out in between them yep. and then make it into kind of 
four office sections. So like half his office would sort of stay in that corner. And then the front, like where Jason's desk is now, would be the new school counselor's office. And then um, then on the other half where that, it'd be like a great big space because it'd be Jason's office plus Janet's office, that whole area. So then Jason's office would be in the back corner, like where right. on the right, like where Joe's office used to be. Okay. And then the front would just be open. Um, to almost the hallway? Hallway. Is that open to the hallway? No, no, no. There's, there's still a door office. to get into there. there. So then there, um, we wouldn't have like a walled off space for Janet. It would just almost more like Angie's office is now. She would just be out there kind of more of a uh, welcome area. Mm -hmm. And so, and then they have a cup machine there and stuff. So the three offices would have doors and walls and open into that kind of corridor. Mm -hmm. um, so that was part of the project. So that way we could get Jason his own space without being in there with Zach and then the counselor to have her own space. And then the other pro part of the project was taking the main, um, the classroom that Mrs. Ford has right now and dividing that into um, two classrooms. So she'd still have her special ed room in the in part of it, but it's just, it's a full size, really big classroom. It's, it's just too much space for one special ed teacher. So on part of that room, we'd have her. And then on the other part of the room, we would have um, elementary win because right now elementary win is also using Jason's office. So Jason's office is Jason, Zach, and win. So re Jason really doesn't have any privacy any time to you know, meet privately with a teacher or a parent. He has to find a different spot or something. So the idea was to divide those that room and then we also got a second bid to just do um, in the classroom that is right now shared with Title I Tag and speech pathology, they kind of just have partitions, partitions kind of in there. So it was to divide that classroom also. So divide two classrooms okay. and then um, that office space. So it's a pretty big project, but we just we need more than just the big story. And then I guess since we're under facilities yet, um, we kind of alluded to it earlier, but Pam and I met with the uh, the builder that's going to do the uh, building on the east side of the bus barn that will be used kind of wrestling multi-purpose type building. And, uh, like Michael and said, he we're on his schedule now. We put 25% down. Um, he's saying late August or September probably. So you think it'll be finished for this year for wrestling for yeah. sure right. yeah yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd hope so so um mid-state they need to come out and the builder and actually mark on the concrete exactly where we need to cut out and then pam's talked to mid-state and got us on their schedule to come saw them i think he wanted a three foot wide spot out of the concrete so then the building will be built, and then we'll have to probably have Mid-State or whoever come in and pour that back in. So, and then I'd say at that point, then the wrestling dads or the ones that had talked about in the bus barn, at that point, then they can come in. And I think they talked about putting the subfloor in when they're using the bus barn. I'd assume they'd probably have to do the same thing here over the, that concrete. Um, it will be insulated and lined already as part of the bid, so we won't have to worry about that. Um, probably minimal electrical, and then I think they'd also talked about using a radiant tube heater in that bus barn, which I think that would work in this new building too. So um, anyway, at that point, once the building's done, then they can kind of move in and do what they were going to do. So actually, should amount to a little less than what they planned as far as uh, if they were going to use the, the bus garage. So, but that's kind of where that sits right now. So it's a, a kind of a medium grade building, or, um, red burgundy trim or whatever. It kind of matches the, like the trim here. Yeah, this and like that fence we were looking at that's for the Playground. Playground kind of matches.
matches that. So, and then at the same time, we might, depending, he said he, the builder said that he could change the bus bar because it's got that orange mm -hmm. trim that was kind of popular in the 70s. Um, change it to, we'll leave the white, but go with like gray trim that matches the gray oh, okay. building. And then like those panels that are orange on the, the bus bar switch them either paint them or switch them out and make those gray so so there's a little continuity between those two buildings just kind of where are the orange panels on that building it's just like, side. Side. Oh, like basically every the corner there's like there's a white like, panel and then an orange white, panel like, and the rest orange of the <laughs> i'm gonna have to go look at it yeah. it was a popular morton option in the <laughs> yeah. late 70s oh, okay. <laughs> And the oh, restrooms will still be bag. used in the, in the bus barn, or yeah, egg or bus barn. Or or the bus barn. Some, yeah, the bus barn will have, there's, there's a uh, restrooms in there. They, I think they removed the piping's all there, so they just need to do that. And we're going to have a door directly across into the new building. So they'll, I mean, they'll have to walk outside like eight foot, but it'll be right across from each other. Okay. So we'll be able to utilize that. And, you know, it, since it's a multi-purpose space, we've already had people reach out to us and ask about renting it for, like, dance practices. That didn't take long. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, but, you know, we're excited to be able to offer that, you know. If, and, of course, it'll be for school first, you know, wrestling and you know, cheer practice and dance practice. Anything that baby needs to have practice that doesn't necessarily have to have a gym just because gym space is at such a premium. Um, and, you know, we're excited that during you know, rainy days, if they need to have elementary PE in the gym, yeah, or recess in the gym, then we can move like a PE class out there or whatever. So just so I have a lot more options for us. So it'll be exciting to have it. Yeah, just one more space. Yeah. Anything else on facilities and grounds, transportation? Okay, we'll move on to personnel. Like we have several resignations, most of them are coaching positions, it looks like. We'll go over those yeah, sure. So, um, Kyle Crampy as middle school girls basketball coach, um, Christy D as middle school boys basketball coach, and then Josh has several as Josh Russell resigning from his shared curriculum director position, his assistant cross country, and his head boys track coach position. We have any questions on those? We have a motion to accept the resignations as presented. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor, aye. Aye. No same sign. Resignations are approved as submitted. Okay, the new contracts. All right, so now we have Colby Wagner as assistant cross country, Chad Maxwell as middle school girls basketball, Janessa Boley. Brooklyn Alber are going to co-head coach for high school girls volleyball. And then Christy D is going to be um, the assistant high school volleyball coach and then also second grade and um, and middle school boys basketball coach. Anybody have any questions on those? That's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Right. <laughs> okay, do we have a motion to approve the new contracts as presented? Do we have a motion? Do we have a second? Second. All in favor, aye. aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion's approved to accept the new contracts as presented. Mr. Wagner's staying. Yeah, Mr. Wagner's staying. And we wish, and I'm sure you've all heard, but um, Mr. Russell got a position as an elementary principal at West Marshall. And so we wish him well. I mean, we hate to lose him, but it'll be um, their game. It's still be missed, but you know, that's what we were interviewing for today was um, curriculum directors. So we have some really, really good candidates. So I'll be excited to announce one soon. And the volleyball coaches reached out to parents immediately, and I appreciate that as a parent sent out a really nice email and schedule and just it's really nice so, and yeah. I like that yeah. I don't know much about 
Um, I, yeah, I know Mrs. Bolney, but it sounds like the um, the other one, Brooklyn, she's coached lots of club volleyball teams and was, um, yeah, she's played a lot and yeah. has her own club team, I think. Okay. Uh, company. Or something like yeah. that. Like, knows a lot of volleyball. Yeah. So I think our girls would be in good hands. Okay, we'll move on to the uh, superintendent's report. We're working on record time here. Yeah, I know. Well, Debbie wanted to get going. It's my day. <laughs> um, I'll keep it short and sweet. And we don't have the principal report, so that helps too. Oh, yeah. Uh, those guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so we had our first um, district leadership team meeting um, on the 7th, and it was so good. It was um, just really, we did a lot of team building, a lot of um, getting to know each other. Um, you know, we had. You know, Mr. Luther working with elementary teachers who don't even, they didn't know each other. And, you know, just because of this, this last year we've had, it's just been such a weird year. So it was just fantastic. Um, and so really the whole morning of that day was spent um, team building. And then the whole afternoon we spent just starting to dig into our district vision, mission, and core values. And what we did is we took some of the, um, the work that the SIAC committee did Back in May, and we looked through that, and then we got going with, you know, kind of going through the process. And so it's, you know, it's going to get messy, and then it's going to get better. And it's, we'll, the goal is, we'll work with this committee, and then we'll bring it to the teachers, and then we'll take it back to the committee, and then we'll take it to the SIAC committee again, and then sometime in the late fall or early winter, we'll bring it to you guys for um, input and your blessing. Um, so we're just trying to really. Do it, do it in a meaningful way that we can get a lot of buy-in from everybody. So it's not just like words on a poster stuck on a wall, but it actually drives our decisions and it drives the direction of how we choose to spend our time and our resources. So we're really excited about this committee. Um, and we visited with the curriculum directors that we interviewed today and they were all, all the candidates were very excited to get involved with um, that, that process as well. So, um, and again, like I just said, the interview, we have the interviews of curriculum directors today and um, we're going to be in great hands. So I'm very excited about the prospects of, of working with some of these people. And um, Jason and Rob and I are working on um, our back to school plans. And we want to, of course, now that we're going to have a curriculum director again, we'll get that person involved with some of the direction of it. So we've just been doing some of the nuts and bolts stuff, like planning like what times we're meeting and where and when. And uh, one of the really exciting things that we're trying to do is we really want to focus on celebrating coming back, like fresh start. We're kind of working on themes and that kind of thing. But one of the things that we want to do is have almost like a back to school community block party. So we want to have like on the first day of school, we haven't set the details, the times or anything yet, but maybe like five to seven or six to eight or something like that. We'll have kids bring their mom and dad back or their guardian or whatever back to school with them. They can meet their teacher, show them their desk. And we want to, we're working with some of the community groups to see if we can get somebody to grill like hot dogs and burgers or something and maybe set up like, know, like the booster club have a booth and Baxter Rec and Bay and whoever and just get people in our building, you know, seeing our new school all shined up and ready to go and just like bring the community back together after just such a long, hard year. And just really, we think like it'd be a great way to just get a positive vibe for that school year. And then you'll know, get everybody excited and we have a home football game that Friday night and just really celebrate like we're back. So, um, so anyway, we're just like literally in the very infancy stages of planning this. I've just started reaching out to some community groups to say, hey, you guys want to partner with this? And, you know, I would love to have you guys as available as you can. I know some of you have your own kids, so you'd have to, like, go to their teacher's room or whatever. But, you know, just having, like, the school board and maybe the city council or city council members, the mayor here, you know, just, just as a whole community, not just a school thing. So, you know, some of the people who don't have kids, like my in-laws, they don't have kids here anymore. But I bet they'd love to come get like a burger or a hot dog and see the school and see their their other friends who don't have kids in school anymore. You know, just really make this feel like a community school again. So that's our goal is to really celebrate, but it's gonna take some planning. So we're working on that. Um let's see, 
position. We still, the only position we have currently left to be filled, other than this curriculum one, um, is Spanish. And we're just, we're still looking. We just don't have a lot of, we've had like no applicants so far. And the one that Rob interviewed and they decided not, they decided to stay in their current district. So um, we're, we're trying, but if anybody, What's Colfax do and West um, Marshall? They, I think they have their own Spanish teachers now. And you know, we've looked at some options of, um, you know, buying seats somewhere. Uh -huh. And so, I mean, we could do that. It's not ideal, but I mean, obviously we've seen kids can learn online. So we don't love that, but if we have to, we can. And it feels like Spanish is one of those jobs that even if you could get somebody just a temporary certification, like you, know, you could do a temporary certification in probably like some of the lower level math or some of the lower level English or, but Spanish, I mean, if you don't want to speak Spanish, like it'd be pretty hard to teach Spanish if you don't know it. So um, we are just really hopeful that we'll still find somebody, but we're, we don't have anybody yet. So. What did we do a couple of years ago? It's probably been on, on, it was like yeah. an online program. We had the in person. Oh, and then um, some other schools who paid us to teach their kids through home. So we can do something like that, but we'd be on the pay receiving end, end. Yeah. Yeah. paying end. Yeah. yeah. And it's gotten quite a bit more expensive. But just you know, our choice. Yeah. So we'll, we'll keep you posted on that. So hopefully mm -hmm. we can just find somebody. But right now we don't have anybody. But Rob's looking like getting credit. He's looking everywhere. So. And I assume the fax thing worked okay. Um, yep. Yeah, so she ended okay. up just deciding to stay. So okay. that was great. Um, yeah. So we, we filled the second grade position with Mrs. D. And so really, right now, all we're looking for is um, Spanish. So keep your fingers crossed on that one. Um, and then I shared um, the IASB priorities, and they don't actually have to be turned in quite yet. But I know the last couple of times that I did this, I accidentally like waited too long and then we were like scrambling. So um, if you want to pick a handful, we can, or you can look at them this month and then I can submit them next month. Doesn't matter to me. Is it three we have usually come up with or five? Five. Oh, okay. Everybody's feeling something. I'll do it tonight or take a month. I haven't looked at them at all. You want to just have them for a month and glance at them, and then you can just tell me next month like what your five are, or you can email me or something. Okay. Also, like your five off. Like every year, they kind of have this. If you want to organize or consolidate. It's a bad idea. It's like they're trying to push push that on schools, and I don't like that. I guess yeah. I don't. It seems like it's in there every year, though. It's, uh, not good. Okay. And the only other thing is just um, I need some you guys to approve the um, sharing agreement in 2080 with uh, Newton for the West Academy. She emailed that to me the other day. So, I don't think we actually have anybody over there right now, but just in case. That, that used to yeah. be basics and yeah. beyond. Or... Yeah, yeah. And they're so old that you know, we didn't have somebody that might they don't have room for them for a long time. Okay, do we have a motion to approve the 2080 agreement with Newton School for the West Academy? So moved. So motion, do we have a second? Second. All in favor, aye. Opposed, okay. same sign. I just grab you like every now and again. <laughs> and then maybe I should have talked about this. I guess um, the Johnson controls back under facilities. They presented us with like a maintenance agreement. I, I guess I didn't even see what the original bid was, but it was. 
59. We told them it was yeah. too high, and now they came back. So Monday, uh, Pam was in when I was in talking to Michael, and so we kind of discussed what if we could trim that down because I mean they were changing filters and all that, and it's like Pam could probably do some of that. So we had them try to dial it back to like where they come out quarterly and do things that you know they had a whole list of things there to clean the clean the uh, heating and cooling equipment, check it, grease it, all that, which that trimmed it down to like 31,000, I think, for the first year, but then they, they wanted a three-year agreement. And then year two and three were in 50,000, like yeah. 52 and 53,000, which to me that's, it stayed more like 30,000 all those years. I'd be a little more interested, so. Um, and I guess we don't have to really act. If if we don't act, it'll just lapse. At, yeah, it just at, goes away. In first of July, I think. So, they will and I think again. if we wanted to do it again, I, I can't believe that they weren't signed an agreement with yeah. us. But I guess I'd like to look around to see if there's other options. So we've met with uh, Chad. I don't have his last name. Yeah. From, he's Huxley, and he does that sort of thing for Iowa State and a couple other. Well, Ballard, he does it for their school where he just comes in and, and kind of looks things over, you know, maybe semi-annually in that, which I do think there's some value in that to, you know, catch things before they cause a real problem. But um, but he hasn't gotten back to us yet, and I don't know exactly why we need to. Didn't Jamie have a guy? That's that was him, yeah. Okay. So, uh, I guess my feeling is right now, well, this, I guess I would like to not do anything, not renew the Johnson Controls contract. And maybe if it's something that we feel we need to do, I mean, I think if we went to them in August or September, they would do a maintenance agreement with us at that point. But I guess I'd like to look at some other options. I guess I feel it's, we get value out of it, but I don't know if we get thirty to fifty thousand dollars a year value out of it so yeah I, I would just you know we've done this what three years now maybe tops um and before that so we, we didn't cut down any, any expenditures when we were going from just calling them as we paying needed them and paying them. them and in fact in the maintenance agreement they provide us with some a block of labor hours at a discounted price, but we're we're still paying the same amount. We're not getting any, you know, discount, even though they say we're discounting it. They're just adding on more to get us back up to where they were. And so, I don't see it. I mean, other than the preventative on the equipment, I don't see as we're really gaining anything. But couldn't we still call them out like four times a year and have, just pay them to? I would just be yeah. curious to see how it compares. Yeah. Like if we call yeah. them on an as needed basis and pay their whatever their hourly rate is to see if it's more or less if we save money. Mm -hmm. Or and also maybe look at other options. Mm -hmm. So is everybody okay with letting that? Yeah. I mean, what? fifty some thousand a year. That you could hire somebody. Yeah. I mean, part time. <laughs> yeah. Well, try. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's that could be somebody's salary. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I mean, you're talking part time, basically. Yeah. Yeah. This, okay. This uh, next board meeting is that date correct? July fourteenth. Or should it be the 21st? It's the third. It should be the third Wednesday. Oh, it should be the 21st. So yeah, that's right. Okay. Last year it was wrong. That's okay. Hey, does anybody else have anything? Motion to adjourn the meeting. We have a second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Those same sign. Meetings adjourned.